Hello everyone, Forever Lee here, and welcome back to a brand new story. Today's story, guys, is a little bit intense. So it all started. I was coming back into the United States, just got off my trip to Haiti. If you guys haven't seen those videos yet, I would highly recommend seeing those. I made a five-part series about my trip to Haiti. But anyway, this is a little bit of a sequel after that. So I arrived back into the United States. Um, this was the summer when I turned 12, and we were getting back from Haiti, obviously. So I was with my family, you know, my two older brothers and my parents, um, and we actually have, most of our family is in uh, Minnesota, and we also have a lot of family in Iowa, so we tend to visit both of them at the same time, but we visited my aunt, who actually lives pretty remotely in Minnesota, so Minnesota, you know, is being famous for, like, lakes and ponds and stuff, and so she kind of lives on a really, really large piece of property, and she has, like, a small pond. So basically, on her property is this small pond. She has basically an entire forest, a whole like plains opening. So like in the middle of a forest, there's kind of like a little opening, um, and then a whole lot of like small hills. Um, so she has a pretty big piece of property, and it's really awesome for what I'm about to tell you guys what I did. Um, she also has two dogs, and those dogs are so wild. And basically, I'll tell you what happens after, but. Um, she also had an airsoft gun, which I'll also add into the story. Um, but finally, the thing that we really enjoyed the most while visiting her was her four-wheeler. Now, she has a really nice four-wheeler. It's super, super high-tech and really, like, really good quality. Um, and her dogs would always, like, try to run in front of it and stuff and, like, run around it. So it was kind of, like, sketchy. It didn't always want to, like, drive around too much because the dogs would try to get in the way. Um, but that's kind of beside the point. Anyway, I would spend countless hours on the four-wheeler by myself. I would just kind of drive around her property and do whatever. And keep in mind, I'm 12 here, so I'm a 12-year-old kid driving a four-wheeler around at pretty high speeds around her property. She has, like, lots of little hills and stuff, so we would always go around on those hills. Um, and that was pretty cool. So, basically, I thought it would be a fantastic idea to go on this one route that goes through the forest. Now, I'm like, okay, I haven't done this route before. I'm going to... Um, go with someone else for the first time. So I go around and it's actually like this horseshoe shaped path So it kind of like you go straight and then it kind of curves around and it goes right back to her property and like to the opening um, And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go with someone. So I go with someone for the first time um, I could do it a few times more, you know, I'm kind of getting the hang of it and Finally, I'm ready to go on my own So uh, I go and I'm driving my four-wheeler or her four-wheeler by myself and um, and it was really fast, but it's also very heavy. And another factor that kind of adds into the story is that it doesn't have reverse, which kind of comes back to bite me later. Um, so anyway, I go around. It's beginning to be a little bit darker. I guess it's kind of like twilight, I suppose, is when it is the time when it's like the sun's about to go down, but it's not quite down all the way. Um, and so you can still see stuff. Um, so I'm going down this trail, and I think everything's going to be fine. And I'm kind of like confident. I feel like I'm just going to do awesome. Um, and then I started hearing these distant sounds of animals, and I could only imagine that they were, well, they were. They were wolves, guys. I could hear howling in the distance, and I was like, okay, these animals, these are definitely wolves, and I can hear them howling in the distance, and it doesn't sound like they're too close to me, but nevertheless, I'm going to go and try to get away from them. So... I start going, and I'm like just noping out of there, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to try to get out here as fast as I possibly can, so I kind of just like haul myself, and I just, just go as fast as I can, and kind of the worst thing happened. I actually got stuck in this huge pit of mud. Now, I was not that strong at this time, so I'm by myself. I'm not that strong. I'm only, only 12, um, and so I basically have to push out this huge heavy four-wheeler all by myself, and it's stuck in mud, so I'm like, crap. So basically I push it out, and you know, it's like, okay, I finally was able to do this, it's very difficult, but I had to do it by myself. And finally I get it out, and basically you throttle it, like full throttle it out, and I went about 30 miles per hour out of that forest, and I basically just hauled so fast out of that forest, and I tried to get out of there as fast as possible, because you know, I mean, wolves, they travel in packs. So then, you know, I kind of like, I, I'm in the clearing now, and I look behind me, and what do I see? Nope, not wolves. I see this huge cloud of smoke because I apparently just completely, like, destroyed that little exhaust bit. I, like, I went so fast, so quick, and there was just a huge cloud of smoke behind me. And I didn't even realize it because I was driving past and my family was, like, eating stuff and, like, talking in the house. And there was, like, I drove past this huge window with a huge cloud of smoke behind me. <laughs> so a little 12-year-old me is going around and, like going as like 30 miles per hour past this window and there's this huge cloud of smoke behind him so i immediately get off and i'm like 
freaking out because I feel like, did I just destroy this? Um, so I immediately get off and I freak out. And I won't go and like tell my aunt, my family about the four wheeler. Um, and she was very forgiving and my family was like, okay, just <laughs> don't do that. Um, so basically I stayed inside and watched TV for the rest of the night because first I didn't want to get like wrecked by wolves. And second, it was just not good to be on a four wheeler that could potentially have some issues with it, especially when there's like smoke pouring out of every like little nook and cranny and that entire thing. So she kind of, uh, you know, got it all fixed up, and next morning I actually took her airsoft gun just in case. It was actually a CO2 airsoft gun, so it's pretty powerful. Um, and so I took my airsoft gun into the path just in case, because you never know what's inside the forest. Um, and it's a pretty big forest, so you don't really ne you don't really know what's in there. Um, but I never, ever saw or heard of any more wolves ever again. Um, but it was pretty scary. I was like, what happened? This was crazy. Um, however, I am alive and well. I have no bite marks on me, so thank goodness. But yeah, guys, that was the story of when I could have potentially got hurt by wolves on a four-wheeling trip through the forest. Now, you never know what could happen in the forest, so be safe, obviously, um, and definitely don't go alone. That was kind of stupid. I kind of trust myself since I did the path a whole lot of times with other people, so I kind of trust myself that I'd be able to do it by myself. Um, and I did do it quite a bit by myself when I got like back. I just had the airsoft gun with me just in case. Um, but anyway, guys, yep, that is the story of when I was four-wheeling and just happened to hear wolves behind me. Not behind me, but around. Um, but anyway, guys, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this story, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a brand new video. Bye, guys.